Hey Rad Reelers, JC here with Rad Rolling Fishing. You guys, I'm up here on the Panama City Public Beach Pier, Panama City, Florida. This is the Gulf of Mexico that you're looking at right here. A huge pier that goes out into the water. And uh, check it out, check it out, check it out. I'm getting ready to drop a GoPro down there and see what kind of fish that we can see. It's been pretty stormy for the past couple days. The water isn't super clear, but I figure if I get out there deep enough, maybe we'll find some good fish. This is the same pier that like two years ago, I caught a massive redfish on. So yeah, there are some big redfish up here. I might come back up here and do some fishing. But today, yeah, I'm just going to be dropping the GoPro down, see what we can see. And I'll be here for a few more days. If the water really, if it stays calm and it clears up, we'll be dropping the GoPro down several times. But let's head out there and see what we can find. Okay, here we go with the drop on the end of the pier. And immediately, you can see here there are a lot of fish as the camera is going down. And I had no idea how many fish were underneath this pier. These guys were down really deep. Every now and then I could see some flashes down there, but I thought they were just some type of a bait fish. And with the GoPro, you can't see in real time what it is that you're recording. So I had no idea that the GoPro was capturing all these beautiful fish down there until I got back to the house and I pulled the SD card, put it in the computer. And at first glance, I thought, well, these are some type of pompano. And then I looked at them again, I'm like, well, actually they look more like permit because I've caught permit before, right? But then it was the lines on the side of the fish that were throwing me off. I'm like, I have never caught a pompano or a permit that had these horizontal lines on their skin like that. So I started searching around on Google to see if they were like some particular species of pompano or uh, permit and I couldn't find anything for either one. I just could not find a match. So then I started looking under uh, jackfish to see if, you know, there was some type of a, a special jack that I had never seen before. I could not find anything on the internet. So I put a little video clip together. I sent it over to my buddy, uh, Tony, the fish gum channel in North Florida, because this video was being made in North Florida. I thought, well, maybe he'll know what they are. And he didn't know what they were. So then I sent the video to my buddy, Mike D, Jetty Rocks Fishing. And I was confident that he would know because he used to be a commercial fisherman. And he just knows a lot of different species of fish. And he got back with me right away. And he said, these are butterfish. And of course, as soon as he said that, I went to Google. I looked up butterfish. And sure enough, there they were. And guys, there's just hundreds of them. And these butterfish, they appear to be about six to maybe eight inches long. Um, yeah, just fascinating. To, I mean, they look like alien-like, but they almost look like they're there uh, spawning because some of them are, are pretty chewed up on their, their fins. Or, you know, maybe there's just so many of them that they chew on each other. I don't know. But a gorgeous fish. So I learned something new on this vacation about a fish that we have in Florida. Never seen those before. And uh, pretty exciting to come across those, no doubt about it. So here in a little while, we're actually going to go down deeper. These guys were kind of like, there we go. These guys were kind of like in the middle of the water column. And so you're going to see here in a little while, we're going to have an Atlantic croaker right there is going to come into the screen. And uh, he's just eating things off of the bottom. So I'm in North Florida and we've got an Atlantic croaker here. And right here in the front where that arrow is, you see that's a pig fish coming by right there. But this area, I, I captured some, oh, oh, there we go. We got a remora right there. This is close to where they clean the fish on the end of the pier. And you can see right here, the pinfish are gathered kind of back in the back. There's another remora that just swam by. And they're actually pulling on a fish head. So this video is actually a compilation of three different days when I went out on the pier and I dropped in various places. So this was all the way out in the deepest water. I'm going to say it's probably over 20 feet deep right here where I dropped. And the, the majority of the fish on the pier were at this deepest area here. There goes another remora. I got some really good shots of the remoras down there. But you can see the fish heads there. The pinfish are just going wild. Now, a lot of different types of uh, bait fish. I was surprised that I didn't see like a lot of mangrove snapper down there. Didn't see any grouper. Um, you're going to see right here a new fish comes into our screen. We got a sea bass that comes in. I only saw him one time. 
in this video. He never showed up again, but got a little cigar minnow swimming by there. And these little fish are just, oh, another one more, these little fish are just chowing down on these fish heads. And that carcass right there, that is a king mackerel carcass. And it looks like they've actually picked that one pretty well because nobody's chewing on that. They're actually going for the fresh fish heads that a guy had just cleaned. I was there when he was cleaning them, throwing them over, and I thought, well, I'll probably get some really good footage while he's cleaning fish. Uh, we got a, a little file fish on the left. I don't know if you guys saw that. You'll get a, a better glimpse of him in a moment. And uh, these remores just keep swimming by, but I'm just fascinated at how many fish were down underneath. There's the file fish. You can see him kind of back towards the darker structure area. And underneath this pier also, um, there is some structure under there, which really that surprised me again that I didn't see some little grouper or some mangrove snapper. And right here we got something really neat happening. A small school of bait fish. Watch them. They get scattered, and then right behind them there's an Almaco jack that goes swimming back there in the background. That was neat. He was just following that school of, of bait fish around. There's more, more bait fish. A lot of different types of bait fish. But what surprised me is there weren't huge schools of bait fish. A lot of times on this pier, the water will be just completely blacked out. There's so many cigar minnows down there. And here we've got the butterfish again. There's another remora. So the butterfish stayed up uh, mostly like in the middle of the water column. Uh, here, for some reason, they were just some of them were just coming down a little bit deeper. You're going to get a good look at the file fish here on the left. No, we already saw the file fish. Okay, there's uh, another remora coming through. There, we get a, a good shot of the butterfish. I left this in here because this guy just came up and he posed for the camera. So you can just get a, a single look at what these butterfish look like. I absolutely love these types of, of videos. I've always been fascinated with what's happening underwater. Another remora coming by. Big remora there. Somebody did catch a nurse shark while I was there. They're, they're just catching small fish. Oh, guys, so this is when I was pulling the camera up. I actually did a still shot. Look at all the butterfish. Isn't that cool looking? But yeah, the water's like over 20 feet deep there, definitely. But yeah, they're not catching any big fish. I mean, that big king mackerel carcass. Here is a uh, fishing rod. And the cool thing about this is this was on a day when the water was really stirred up. And I... I had no idea this fishing rod was down there. The next day I was up on the pier getting more underwater footage and a kid told me that a big redfish, he thought a big redfish has actually pulled his rod over the pier the day before. <laughs> and that was probably his fishing rod. And we're back over here around the, the fish cleaning area here. Another remora coming through. You can see some larger structure in the background. I don't know if they had some, some old pier pilings, like when they were building the pier, if there were some pilings that fell over, but there's some structure under the pier. So here we're going into where the redfish were at, and the water is a little bit more stirred up because it's, there's a big redfish right there. Because this is in a shallower area, and in the beginning of the video, I showed you guys where I had... Uh, caught that big redfish off of this pier. We come to Panama City, Florida every year during July, and these redfish are always in this particular area of the pier. It's not very far up on the pier. It's like it's it's it, like five or six feet deep right here. And I was trying to get there was a school of like twenty bull reds, and they just would not swim underneath the pier. They were swimming way out away from the pier, and they kept circling around. I think they had probably been hooked so many times that they were 
smart to stay away from the pier. <laughs> but I did get some decent footage of these redfish you'll see here. And yeah, they're in the very shallow water. I mean, it's like five or six feet deep. It's all stirred up from the current. You notice how the bottom is all ripply right there. And like I said, every year these redfish hang out in the shallow area. And, and my theory is that because there's so much current moving in and out where the waves are crashing into the shore, that you get these ripples on the bottom. And I think these redfish just cruise around in the shallows looking for sand fleas or crabs or, you know, anything that will get stirred up by the current. And uh, that's why you just have those, those ripples because that current is just going in and out, constantly fanning that sand. And so it's naturally being fanned and these fish just cruise along on the bottom looking for something to eat. But this was a little bit later in the day and I was able to get these redfish. They were piled up back under the pier. And when I drop the GoPro over, I have no control over which direction that it's pointing. It's just kind of free floating down there turning, uh, you know, back and forth in the current. But it was one of my goals to make sure that I got video footage of the redfish. There they are again. I spent a lot of time, guys, up on this pier, uh, specifically trying to get the redfish. I did a lot of drops until um, I, I finally was there when they were in the area that I was dropping. I did not see redfish anywhere else on the pier. Um, I actually dropped in a lot of different areas on the pier, and it was the shallow water area of the pier that held the redfish, and all the way out on the end of the pier held the most bait fish and pinfish. Like here, you don't see hardly any bait fish. Every now and then, there's some that swim by. So, but guys, I, I hope you enjoyed this. Listen, if you like this video, I have another video where I did underwater pinfish trap, and I put a GoPro inside the trap. So make sure you check out that video. Thumbs up or appreciate it. And everybody, get out there and go fishing, man. Life is fun. Live it. See ya!